Chance every god when you've missed every shot.
Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> it's really nice to be here. The, uh, I don't know if this is, uh, I haven't been here enough to really know if this is your normal weather. Is this your normal weather today? Yeah. It's just perfect. <laughs> it's just perfect. It feels like you're walking. We came up, we went down for a walk down the street and it feels like you're walking up into the clouds. You know, you're heading up towards the venue and it's a church and you're in the sky. Ah, it's just brilliant. <laughs> just feels lovely. Um, <clears throat> This is a song that, uh, and this is the end of our tour. Tonight's the last night of our tour, and it's probably the last time I'll tell this story forever. <laughs> but uh, this is a, so a song that we wrote after uh, hanging out with a friend of ours in Ireland who's uh, <clears throat> in the daytime. She works in a health food store, and at nighttime she's a ghostbuster. And uh, she's, <laughs> she goes to people's homes if they're having trouble with, you know, um, lights going on and off, strange feelings, uh, you know, dark, kind of a dark feeling in a house or whatever. She goes and she basically locates the source of the of the disturbance and she managed to communicate with whoever it is and you know basically according to her a lot of people don't know they're dead they just kind of wander around thinking what are these people doing in my house and uh <laughs> and she basically explains to them that you know to, that they've actually moved to a different a different place and actually they should head up or head down or do whatever <laughs> but basically go in the direction, go in the direction uh, that's, uh, that's suitable to them, not necessarily here. So she's all about the good, the good, the good vibes, I suppose. Um, and she, uh, and so, so her and her husband do this, and basically one evening, um, her and her husband were, were heading out, they were finishing up in the health food store and heading out to do their work, and uh, had their, their backpacks on, and their, what's the, <laughs> <laughs> their, uh, what's it, what is that thing they fire in Ghostbusters? <laughs> um, so they were heading out to do their work, and, uh, and her husband came on real strange, and she she they had they were, she was kind of used to this kind of thing coming because sometimes things would come through them, and uh, she uh, her husband went into a very strange place, and she said okay, and she matched, sat him down, and she knew there was something coming through, and she was like hello, who are you, and uh, and uh, what, what came out of her husband's mouth was we come from the dark, and she got really freaked out, and she has this kind of quick fire ninja move she can do to get rid of the ghost really fast, you know, to get rid of the spirit. <laughs> And so she did this thing, and basically her, her husband came out of it and was like, listen, whatever that was, it was horrible, and I don't want it to ever happen again. But uh, if it happens again, I really want you to try to communicate with it, because I think it needs our help, because it was really dark, whatever it was. So uh, she, she, um, she, she promised him. And uh, the, next, the next week, almost exactly the same time, he went into the same place, and she managed to communicate again, who are you? We come from the dark. Where in the dark? From a long time ago. From when? What was the year? And basically, what she managed to communicate with these, and it was two spirits, um, and they were two teenage boys who had been killed in Ireland in the 14th century for being, they were handicapped, and, uh, or d disabled, or whatever way you want. I don't know what the PC word is, it, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but basically, they were disabled, and uh, so back then, if you were in any way different, you were considered possessed by the devil. So they were, they were burnt at the stake for being kind of, you know, evil. And, uh, and she managed to communicate it, and the times have changed, and that it's not necessarily viewed as evil anymore. And actually, they've been feeling guilty because they felt that they were evil. Like they've been walking in a dark place with a heavy energy. And she managed to communicate to them that you're not evil, that actually things have changed, and the, and the church was insane back then. And it's uh, not much better now, but it's getting, <laughs> it's getting a little bit more sort of, you know, getting a little bit more tuned in. Um, and so, so. So they described what it was beautiful. What, what, what inspired the song? I know it's a long story, but what inspired the song was was that they they described they walked in the darkness for a long, long time, and that in way, way in the distance, they spotted these two tiny lights, and there was nothing else on the horizon except complete blackness, and that they felt they walked and walked and walked, and eventually, when they came to the two tiny spots of light, they were the back of her husband's eyes, and they saw her, and that was the first communication they'd had with anybody since they were killed. So. Uh, so she uh, sent them on to a higher place, and, uh, and so they, they thanked her. But uh, I thought it was a lovely idea, the idea that, you, that you're walking in darkness, feeling guilty about something you didn't do necessarily. And uh, yeah, so that, I related to it. <laughs> <laughs> Being an Irishman, you're, you're guilty anyway, <laughs> for whatever reason. So this is a song, it's called Drown Out.
cheerful song at some point this evening, <laughs> is a uh, promise, uh, but for now, <laughs> uh, this song is ultimately cheerly, cheerly, cheery, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's a song that's called This Low, <laughs> um, um, <clears throat> I guess it comes from the, the idea or the sense that when you sing the blues, uh, you know, the idea that when you, this blues doesn't necessarily have to be like, but when you sing your blues or you sing your troubles, that actually you, it l allows you to live a good life. So we're actually pretty happy folk. Um, but our songs are miserable. <laughs> it's like that, you know, it's like that idea that you, some of the most uptight people I've ever met in my life are folk singers because everything is pretty and nice. And, and they go off stage and they're all like, and you know, some of the most relaxed, I mean, you know, I've met a bunch of people who, who are in hardcore punk rock bands and they're all vegans and they just, afterwards they just hang out and chill and they're like, yeah. <laughs> and they're sitting in their Birkenstocks or their Crocs and they're just like, yeah, it was a great gig, really enjoyed it. <laughs> and they're totally happy people because they've just expressed it all. So, <clears throat> I'd like to think that we're somewhere in between uptight, relaxed, uh, miserable, happy. Uh, right. anyway, this is called This Low. One, two. We made a plan that was subject to change So whatever way it works out, we both get the blame In the eyes of this love And you took the wind right out of my sails I sweat in out on all the little details in the arms of this love mm -hmm. in the arms of this love
Hi. <laughs> Thanks for coming. So it's the same chords if you want me. <laughs>
going to play for you is quite recent. We, me and Glenn wrote it quite recently, and it doesn't really have a name yet, but then for now we decided to call it Fantasy Night. Um, and we'd like to play this song for uh, our friends in San Francisco, Bruce and Debbie. Uh, who have been really kind to us and you know it's really nice to see familiar faces in every time you go to and they've been especially nice to us and we've, we've come here for a two-week tour and in the whole tour we didn't really get <laughs> five minutes for ourselves we've been so busy and Bruce was so kind to us today that he brought us a little beat and it made all the difference in the world <laughs> and Apart from being really nice to us, he's also really nice to the animals. <laughs> uh, him and his wife adopted probably 20 dogs already. <laughs> and they treat them really nice. And this is for them. Thank you. Growing in the mountains beneath the pressure of all time, the growing hope and expectation, waiting for your hands to find. Cause only you could reach inside me and figure out the world of a life I live providing what it was you needed most.
So go on now, you have forgiven. Let's put it down tonight. The story of two lovers who dance both edges of the night.
Can't wait forever Is all that you said Before you stood up But you won't disappoint me I can do that myself But I'm glad that you've come Now if you don't mind Leave Leave And free yourself At the same time Leave I don't understand You've already gone And I hope you feel better Now that it's out What took you so long Well the truth has a habit Of falling out of your mouth Well now that it's come if you don't mind, leave, leave, and please yourself at the same time, leave, leave, let go of my hand, you said what you have to now, leave, leave, let go of my hand. And what you came to now leave Leave Oh, leave Leave Let go of my heart You said what you song I wrote for my grandmother years ago. Uh, her and my grandfather must have been in love because they argued every single day that we were ever. Um, I think they had a great love for each other. I, I just think it was absolutely violent. Um, my grandmother came from the, her roots were in the, the, fairy, the fairies of Ireland and she would curse them the whole time. Um, she would put 1,400 mal maledictions on him every day. Um, 
she would wish him rheumatism and uh, arthritis and uh, he would have trouble sleeping. Um, but uh, they loved each other as far as I can. <laughs> it was always such, a, it was such an education as a child to be in the house with them because the two of them would just like absolutely without any candor tear into each other uh, and it was an amazing experience you know, <laughs> to be at the house. My grandfather, as a child, you know as a child you, you see things differently. He used to have a small black cloud above his head the whole time and it used to rain on him. And, I, and maybe my grandmother did this but I, I used to see it as a kid. He'd be standing there and it'd be literally raining on his head. Um, a little cartoon. Um, <laughs> so uh, when uh, so when my, gran when my grandmother uh, died, my grandmother died before him, which was very unusual because my grandmother was much more, uh, she seemed much more kind of strong. Um, and uh, she died before him and it was, uh, it was almost like he just completely and utterly fell apart and died very soon afterwards. So, so this song is, 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 is for, for them. Um, and it's called Save Me Now. Scratching out the surface now And I'm trying hard to work it out And so much has gone misunderstood And this mystery only leads to doubt And I didn't understand You reach down and take my hand So if you have something to say You're gonna say it to me now Cause this is what you've waited for Your chance to even up the score If you have something to say, you better say it now, now. Cause this is what you're waiting for. Your chance to even up the score. And as these shadows fall on me. This wreckage, Lord, and it's more than you've ever seen before. So if you have something to say, say it to me now. Just say it to me now.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Song is is called Golden, and uh, it's a song. Uh, it's a song that I haven't played that much, so I'm still kind of catching up with it. Um, and uh, this is a, a song about being ready. Uh, the song is, is is all about this uh, being in a state of readiness, whatever that means. Whether it means being ready to uh, ready to come into a into a new situation, or ready to leave the world, or ready to enter the world, whatever it is, it's a state of readiness. And so that's the idea of it. It's not necessarily positive or negative or anything like that. But, uh, <laughs> I started writing the song about somebody who was who was coming into adulthood, and then I and then I realised I was actually writing it for someone who was preparing to leave, and then I wrote it for someone who was who had, who had made a decision not to live anymore, and it was kind of weird. It was like all those things in one. So this is a kind of a weird mixture of all those, but you probably won't notice that in the lyrics. But anyway, <laughs> so this is called Gold. <laughs> Disappear with the ground, resist. It's only right to want to stay here and face the fight and the ones. Live to tell what sing the songs so very well, and you are golden, you are golden, you are golden, you are. Golden. You are takes you down it's gonna come yeah. without a sound cause you are golden you are golden you are golden you are You are golden, you are golden, you are golden, you are
Thanks very much. Where are we, man? in a different way though. <laughs> in our minds and our souls. Mm, this is an interesting bit of the evening. What do you want to do? Once? You'd like to hear once? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to make it. There's that thing when you're tuning a guitar, you go like this. <laughs> and it's like someone's talking to you, but you're just like... song first and then we play that one. Is that okay? <coughs> so this song is about, uh, uh, I guess I'll give you the honest version of it. Yeah, there's, there's two versions. <laughs> uh, so this song is about, uh, I, I guess, when, you, when you're when you one, you're in a situation with someone and it's great and it's wonderful and something happens and you become kind of obsessive and it was this thing that, ha you know what, what happens with the balance of relationships, you, one day you're on top of it and you're really cool and everything's fine, yeah, go on out with your mates, yeah, sure, I'll see you, or I'm going off on tour, yeah, it's cool, everything, you're on top of it, okay, <laughs> okay, sorry, and then another time you just, something happens and you become kind of nervous or freaked out that your lover is going to leave you and you're just and, and then that turns into something else and then before you know it you're just you're you're totally acting in a way that you'd never want to act uh and it's it's kind of horrible and obsessive and, and then and then and then the reaction to that is to is to pray to the lord to turn off this see there's a the head the head muscle and the heart muscle don't communicate with each other and so it's the only two parts of the body that they're they're, they're, they're like they're like brothers that don't talk um <laughs> So one's translating messages to the other through life, and, and, and so, you know, it's horrible. So, so this is all about praying, you know, the, the logic kicking the, the instinct and, the, and praying that the heart will get turned off, and, and one, day, one day the Lord gives you, you know, whoever your Lord is, uh, gives you your wish. And so this song is about the heart just one day just going, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and then you're fine. <laughs> and, and you're back to, yeah, come on out, do your thing. But, <laughs> but the problem is that you actually don't care. And that's, that's where it gets, that's where it's actually really sad. So it goes from being a kind of a loving, go on ahead and do your thing to I just don't care, which is really sad. So, <laughs> so this is probably the most depressing song we play all night. <laughs> this is called What Happens When the Heart Just Stops. So it happens when the heart just stops Stops caring for anyone The hollow in your chest dries up And you stop believing So it happens when the heart gives up but the body goes on living The blood crawls to a slow and stops And it goes away Well, we've got no one to meet No love we would beseech We only have ourselves to blame For everything well, there was no answer in the dust 
And I'm missing you so much, but now you're sleeping. And I'm leaving, yeah. Empty handed waiting. Tide will subside and we'll agree. It was a given, yeah. Well, there was no standard we could set. And the world, it does regret to have to leave you in this state of bereavement. You see, I'm feeling everything. Nothing gets by. Well, there is this hollow in my chest. And it's time I won't forget. There is no comfort in the eyes that put us always to the test. I can't prepare myself for that, but I'll work it out in time. There is a love that flows between us, ever changing every day. I worked myself up to a crawl. Well, I'm not fearing it at all. We had no reason left to stay. And that's why we're leaving, yeah. Well, there was no answer in the dust. And no one out there to trust. There is this light that drags us beating and pulling into disappointment. And I miss all. Disappointment and disappointment. Thank you. Van Morrison song. We were born before the wind, and we're so much younger than the sun. And every bonny boat was one as we sailed into the mystic. I believe this song was written in San Francisco, in fact. Now hear the sailors cry Feel the sea and touch the sky And let your soul and your spirit fly As we sail into the mystic yeah. And when that fog home blows You know I will be coming home And when that fog home whistle blows I want to hear it younger than the sun and every bonnie boat was one 
as we sail into the mystic. Hear the sailors cry. Feel the sea and touch the sky. And let your soul and your spirit fly as we sail into the mystic home. And when that fog home blows. You know I will be coming home And when that fog calm whistle blows I wanna hear it so Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Ten years ago, I fell in love with an Irish girl. She took my heart. But she went and screwed some guy that she knew And now I'm in Dublin with a broken heart Oh, broken-hearted Hoover fixer-sucker guy Oh, broken-hearted Hoover fixer-sucker, sucker guy Yeah, one day I'll go there and I'll win her once again But until then I'm just a sucker of the guy song I'm just, uh, she's asleep actually the only person that might really truly appreciate this song is asleep but uh, uh, <laughs> but that's a good sign I like that um, is she smiling um, a friend of mine was at a, a friend of mine uh, who is great claim to fame is that he was the first time Led Zeppelin ever played Stairway to Heaven was in Dublin uh, they, they kind of jammed it out and uh, he was in his mother's room at the time and uh, <laughs> And he's a guitar player and he reckons that that was, he was like, something happened, man. <laughs> anyway, so. It's a, it's a lovely idea. I like, um, anyway. 
Uh, the day I was born, uh, Serge Gainsbourg recorded Melody Nelson, which for me is kind of, I know it was Paris and Dublin is not so close, but greatness was happening. Yeah. <laughs> greatness was happening in, the, happening in the world that day. Uh, so yeah, so, so I wrote this song for my niece. Uh, it's a pretty simple little song, I'll just sing it for you because it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of bullshit, but it's kind of nice. Um, <laughs> she, uh, she, she really liked, she was kind of like, I really like to hear you singing, Glenn, but every time you sing, you make me sad. And, uh, <laughs> So can you write me something, or can you sing me something that isn't sad? And so I kind of was, I, I was like, oh, okay. So I, you know, five minutes later I came in, I was like, I have it. So this was, uh, this is a song I, I wrote for my niece. I'm the banana man. I go up the tree, I go down the tree, I go home for my tea, I'm the banana man. And I drink my Coca-Cola and I play my rock and roller down by the sea, I'm the banana man. I go up the tree, I go down the tree, I go home for my tea, I'm the banana man. And I drink my Coca-Cola and I play my rock and roller down by the sea. Everybody likes banana, yeah. You sing it? I'm the banana man, I go up the tree, I go down the tree, I go home for my tea, I'm the banana man. And I drink my Coca-Cola and I play my rock and roller down by the sea, I'm the banana man. I go over the tree, I go down the tree, I go home for my tea, I'm the banana man. And I drink my Coca-Cola and I play my rock and roller down by the sea. Everybody likes banana. Oh. She's awake. Spells banana na. Everybody likes banana. Yeah. Everybody likes banana. Do you want to come and dance on the stage? Just do us a little dance. was really great. <laughs> now she can go back to sleep with this one. <laughs> okay. So this is called Once, and this is we wrote this song for the film Once. Uh, and uh, this. If anybody hung out in the cinema long enough, this is the very last song you hear. Um, the first verse of this. One, two, three, one, two. Part of me is that. And won't return And part of me is high The path that's burned Once, once 
I knew how to talk to you once, once, but not anymore. Hear the sounds coming. Oh, hear the sounds coming. That was before once once I would have laid down and died for you once once but not anymore hear the sounds call me everyone we have had a great night this is really really special this place is brilliant it's a lovely room good people uh, the two lads that played before us I, we don't know them um, but they blew me away they were brilliant so I want to thank the two of them Thanks. <laughs> the end of our gig and it's very cool <laughs> it's not cool to be at the end of the gig but it's very cool that this is all happening and we've, we've, we've been having an amazing few weeks you know it's it's uh i was, I was ex explaining this earlier on probably not very eloquently but it feels like i've been in a band for 17 years and and it kind of feels almost like every single person that comes to our gigs it almost feels like we've knocked on their door and canvassed for their support and it's almost we come back every year and we play more and there's an extra five people at the gig every year and and we kind of worked it out that we'll probably fill you know a thousand seater in about six years 60 years if we <laughs> if we progress you know but it, it, it's just a funny thing and, and you're you're chipping away at the world and you're doing your thing and you're showing your fingers are dirty because you're digging for the gold and you're you know and you're kicking the world's ass and you're one day you're hoping and then one day the world just turns around and says what <laughs> and it's like nothing and it's the, it is the genuinely the freakiest thing in the world. Myself and Mara arrived in New York about 12 days ago. 
we were, we've been in Europe and we've been hearing great things about the film. Everything's been sort of, you know, people are like, oh yeah, it's doing really well in America. But uh, we haven't, we haven't, thanks. Thank we, we certainly haven't had any first-hand experience. The only thing we had noticed is that people were stopping us in Dublin saying, are you the ones guys? And we were like, we were like yeah, because we hang out all the time. So it's kind of, we're always together. And so they would be like, well, uh, are you the one? And we'd be like, yeah. And we always noticed they were Americans. And we were like, this is really interesting. Like this, <laughs> you know, why are American people stopping us in Dublin? And then, uh, and then we came here and we got to New York and it was amazing. It was just like, oh my God, life-changing experience. It was like, you know, it was, and to be honest, the jury's kind of out on what it, how it feels. I mean, it feels amazing, but it's totally freaky, actually. <laughs> uh, and you know, it's kind of, and then Mar in her, in her infinite wisdom said, you know, well, this is what you wanted, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm like, yeah, I know, 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 but, you know, God. And she, and she said, she said, you know, if you, if you flirt with popularity, don't be surprised if it offers you sex. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I just thought it was an incredibly clued in thing to say. <laughs> so. I'm going to end on a song that I just did with Brian. The song is, is, is basically about kind of looking at the sky and, uh, you know, those amazing nights where you have nothing to do and you're, 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 in a, you're zoned out and you're cool and everything, and, but you're asking the big questions in your life and you just happen to have one of those. This, this song basically was one of them, except it took place on a very drunken night. Um, lying in the middle of a field in Ireland, uh, in the rain, in fact. Um, so it wasn't a very idyllic situation. Uh, but it's about looking at the sky and, and, and basically trying to make sense of everything. And, and, you know, we all know that. We all know that. I don't need to go into it. So. Star, star, teach me how to shine, shine. Teach me so I know what's going on in your mind Cause I don't understand these people They're saying the hill's too steep Well, they talk and talk forever And they've never climbed Oh, oh down into these situations, bringing out the best in you. You're flat on your back again and start. Your every word I'm needing, can you help me to see? Cause I'm lost in the dark. Oh. Star, star, teach me how to shine, shine, teach me so I know what's going on in your mind. Cause I don't understand these people. Saying the hills asleep well, they'll toss and turn forever, but no rest will they find. Star, star. Teach me how to shine chocolate factory. I'm giving it to you. You've won. Well done. Would you sing that 
Bondi. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's really, really great.